Predator versus Wolverine, number one, Ben Percy, Greg Land, Ken Lashley, and Andrea DeVito on art on this one, Doc. And this was a little bit of a wild card. It was 50-50 that this comic book was actually going to be good or bad. And I would say it's definitely more good than bad. Yo, I have been really underwhelmed by Ben Percy for probably the last two years. I'm not normally a big fan of these types of crossovers, but yo, it's actually kind of fun book. I happen to love these kind of crossovers. But, you know, there have been big time of disappointments. Like the biggest one I can think of is actually the Alien versus Predator movie which is absolutely a blast when the aliens and predators are fighting. But whenever they're trying to set up the story, it's just so boring and monotonous. And this comic book does suffer from that a little bit. There's a little bit too much storytelling rather than giving you the big payoff for this, which I I do think drags it down a little bit. But there's definitely enough of it to, to make you have a lot of fun. And there are some really crazy moments. You get a predator fighting an orca. You get a predator fighting a bear. There's definitely some fan service going on this comic book. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this book is a lot of fan service. And you know what? I didn't really mind it that much. It's a fun book, regardless of how, whether, whether it fits in continuity or not. Yeah, let's get to this bad boy and talk about what's going on here. I mentioned that there are three artists. I personally think the, the Ken Lashley stuff looks the best. It's very gritty. It's very dirty. It's something that you would want on a Predator uh, Wolverine comic book. I think it looks pretty nice. The Greg Land stuff doesn't seem to fit, even though that's the majority of the story. The Ken Lashley stuff is present day. The Greg Land stuff is in like 1900. And then the Andrea DeVito stuff uh, apparently was in like the 60s or 70s. That's the way I kind of take it. But I get the feeling in the next issue, we're going to see see more Andrea DeVito. This is a, a, a hunt that has lasted 120 years, you know, on and off between Predator and Wolverine, where he's got multiple interactions and it's this kind of back and forth. The one set in the 19, in 1900. And I think that the reason I pick, they picked Greg Land for that is because his style kind of resembled one of the Kubert. I can never remember which Kubert it was. I think it was Adam Kubert on Origin, especially with the, the kind of coloring that's in it. So it was trying to get that same vibe the one in the 60s you know it's got all of team x if anybody remembers that terrible wolverine origins movie that was the team that he worked with except for there was no deadpool all right Um, well let's get into this story doc you kind of hit it at some of the things going on there the beginning of the story is in the present day i think uh, as far as art wise i think this is the the most effective one maybe not the most effective story because we only get a little piece And Wolverine is in trouble. He's had like his his shoulder blasted off. It looks like his face is damaged. And we've got this predator kind of looking at him, you know, through his different sensor arrays and he's trying to escape him. And it's pretty exciting stuff. And it it gets you really excited. You're like, thank you very much for jumping right into it. You're establishing that, oh shit, this is really serious. Wolverine is all kinds of messed up. This is obviously not going very well for him. He's getting hunted through this this forest, and you get the 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 cool predator infrared vision that I always loved. That was the best part of the Terminator or the the Predator movies. Whatever he'd be looking at his his prey through, and we get to see it through his eyes. Obviously, you you get to see the predator a little bit, and he doesn't look like he's taken almost any damage at all. This is a very one sided fight, and Logan is definitely on the wrong end of it right now. And as you mentioned, this fight is actually 120 years in the making. Then they flash back to the 1900 story that's illustrated by Greg Land. And this is probably a two thirds, if not greater of the actual page count is this story itself. He's in Alaska, I believe, at 1900. He's a loner, as you would expect uh, Logan to be. He's out there. He's collecting beaver pelts and he's thinking about how the world has changed. And he doesn't really like interacting with people, but there's a really bad snowstorm and he needs to sell some of these hides and stuff, and he needs to get whiskey drunk with the Eskimos. He shows up at the bar, and there's a man there that's looking to hire somebody. And this lady says, that's the guy for you. He's the one you want to hire. Imagining that this job that he has to hire him for is kind of dangerous, and it turns out there's two guys. They actually want to steal his stuff. They put a gun to his head. And I love this. There's this, like, one internal monologue where he says, I tried not to pop the claws these days, Last thing I want to do is bring more hateful attention. Like as he's sawing a man's hand off after he, you know, busts him in the head with a bottle and murders two other guys. It's like, yeah, you're being really inconspicuous. But he absolutely lays waste to these guys and really proves this lady's point. 
that Wolverine is probably the guy that you want to hire. Because he's the crazy son of a bitch that'll take virtually any job. He needs, this guy claims he needs to, uh, you know, his kid got kidnapped by these bank robbers and he needs to get him back rather than because he can't pay the ransom or some shit like that. I guess this kind of implies that even back then he was still kind of a sucker for a kid in trouble while he fucks up these guys in the bar. I understood his logic. You know, he did get kind of chased down as being a freak for the first time he popped his claws when he was still a teenager. Now he's like, well, I could still fuck everybody up without using the claws. And at least then I don't get like a mob trying to chase me out of town. This is just bar fight shit. Yeah, he, he lays waste to those guys. He sets out on this adventure with this guy. It's snowing very badly. And by this point, we've seen the Predator. It turns out it looks like there was another Predator that was in that area that was killed by some Eskimos. Some indigenous people, he's got arrows and stuff all laid into him. And as they're going out, they finally find the guys, but they find a, a, you know, a bunch of bodies that are skinned that's obviously associated with the predator. In the meantime, we see him hunting orcas and all kinds of animals. And Wolverine does save the day. He goes in there. He stops the bank robbers. He kills them all. It turns out that guy was lying to him. He was a no good son of a bitch. He actually just wanted all the money that they stole because they decided they didn't need him anymore. And then the predator shows up and we get a really really good predator wolverine fight where he doesn't have adamantium claws he does have the bone claws at the time and it looks like they're both mortally wounded and he ends up uh, i guess luring him into a cave with a bear and then we get the predator bear fight and wolverine thinks it's over he thinks he's he's defeated this guy because that bear is going to eat this predator for lunch yeah uh, it was exciting stuff it was good 20 something wolverine wanders off at this point he's like okay that's taken care of. I'm going to get the fuck out of here. Get some distance between me and then go and heal. Yeah, you saw like the cool scene with he had that that, that spinny, you know, frisbee thing that like comes back to him like a boomerang. You got that thing. It, he takes off Wolverine's claws with his claws in, in a pretty cool sequence. And this is after Wolverine kind of got him, the predator not expecting Wolverine to have claws. And he pops it and basically cuts his throat. So both of them kind of have to get back to their corner before they go to round two. And that's when Wolverine lures them, it lures him into the uh, the bear's den. He wanders off, and then you see the predator come out of the the cave with the bear's head in hand because he good cut the. Yeah, it was kind of cool. So it turns out that he was premature in thinking that the predator was done. He actually wins in the end, and it turns out. This predator holds a grudge on, on Wolverine. He didn't even know it. Yeah. Well, we think he does. We're not 100% certain yet. Because the next thing that we see is a jump forward in time to his days on Team Accidents. Wolverine, Sabretooth, Maverick, Cruel, and Jackson are in the jungle. And it's basically the Predator movie where Wolverine, yeah. I guess, is Arnold and Sabretooth is Jesse the Body Ventura. And this is the story I personally would have just told. I would have just had T-Max versus a Wolverine and uh, they're going into the jungle. They're sent on a mission, but they're being kind of set up just like the original movie. It was absolutely amazing. I wish this was the entire story, but I do get the feeling that this is going to be the story moving forward. And it portends a uh, great badassness in the future of this comic book series. Yeah. You're about to see a bunch of jacked army guys with weapons and mutant powers fighting a predator in what central or south america south in the jungle yeah, yeah i mean you know this and is cool's gonna... already been taken he's already got netted by the predator you know he's about to get skinned oh yeah he well no he, he might do that thing remember the the predator has that net that like can wind up and like cut them into little pieces too because well, it's like skins a, him just to make a point I, i'm betting he's gonna cut him into little cruel cubes you know you don't get much in this and yeah i'm betting you're gonna get most of issue two is going to be this. They'll bounce back to the present for a couple of pages. But most of issue two is going to be back in this era. Now, I'm wondering whether or not they're going to put more eras in or if they're going to bounce back to, to, to 1900 again. I don't know. You know what? I kind of like this issue. It's And there's a lot of funness here. No, no, it was it was a good time. I really enjoyed this comic book. I think it could have been better if they cut out parts of the the 1900 story like the little thing with the guy just have wolverine fight and predator you don't have to overthink this but he didn't throw in so much story that it kind of bogged it down and discombobulated what you wanted you were definitely getting the fan service that you wanted you got the big confrontation and it set up like 
the Predator T, but with Wolverine and Sabretooth on it to fight the Predators. I think I just yeah. might have spoiled something in South America. And it got me just super duper excited for the next issue. I'm on board. Way to go, Ben Percy. He's written some good stuff before. This is the best thing he's written in like two or three years, at least with Wolverine, because his Ghost Rider has actually been kind of good. Do I think it's going to matter in the in the, the greater scheme of things? Absolutely not. However, it's fun. And you know what? Right now, just having fun, ridiculous action comics, that's what we want. Yeah, I'll give it like a 375, 40. Yeah, okay. Uh, you know what? I'll give it a four. I, I wasn't a huge fan of um, who was the third artist again? Andrea DeVito? Yeah, Andrea DeVito. I was not a huge fan of, of his stuff with the, the Team X members. Well, we shall see if he can fix that one. But uh, hey, I'd say a four. I didn't ruin your life this week with Worst of the Week. I gave you a little surprise to Ruski. Are you going to pick this bad boy up? Are you going to pick up number two? Yeah, I think I might read it. It was, it was, it's fun. Are you going to trade weight on this one? Are you going to trade weight on the stuff you like that is? Nah, you know what? I may go into a store and just buy these. You know, maybe I'll wait until the final issue because I'm betting this isn't going to sell out anyway. So I got a question for you, Doc, actually. Yeah. The cover shows Weapon X fighting the Predator, but that never happens in this comic book. Do you consider that bait and switch? Yes, I do. Yeah. Although I expected is, something similar to that moment to happen, and it never does. You have it in the 1900s. You don't have it in the the, the Weapon X era. So why? it's a cool cover, but you know they should have done it. something. You know, hey, if they're gonna have like a Weapon X era Wolverine fighting a, a Predator, save that cover from that issue for that issue. I'd be down for that if they put Predator fighting a bear with Wolverine jumping in the background. Yeah, that's a badass cover too. Like uh, it would go. absolute, it would absolutely <laughs> get me be like, huh? All right, that looks kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'll go for it. They they probably didn't need to do that, but uh, hey, high moment. This is a good comic book. It's it could have been better, but it's absolutely good. Yeah, it's it's about a four. I think I'm actually rating it higher than you this week. Doc and I have reviewed a ton of Ben Percy, Wolverine comic books, and X Force comic books, and the last time Ben Percy did anything this much fun or this cool with the character was a long time ago. It was back during Ten of Swords, where he was the only one that really did anything that stood out and felt like it actually mattered during the thing. Doc and I broke it all down, and we talked about how amazing that two-part story was, and we also talked about how not amazing Jerry Duggan was with his story. Definitely check this one out right here. There's also a link in the video description.